Hi, my name is Jim Heineke. Uh, I teach honors geometry and business algebra this year at Sarah. Uh, and uh, this, I started Sarah High School 2000, 2001 school year, so I'm going into my 21st year here at Sarah. Uh, and I'm also the math department chair. Uh, and uh, been on campus for a while and definitely enjoy uh, the community and what I'm, what I'm a part of. So for incoming freshmen, we have freshmen coming in in a variety of places. Uh, we have some freshmen that begin in Algebra 1. Uh, we have some freshmen that begin in Honors Pre-Calculus. So we take placement tests, we take recommendations from 8th grade teachers, and uh, we'll even uh, offer challenge tests for students that are uh, looking to start outside of Algebra 1. And uh, we kind of figure out where the best fit is for the student. Uh, we know that we have over 70 plus feeder schools. Uh, but because we've been dealing with the schools for such a long time, we have a good idea of what grades the students uh, need to enter a certain class, uh, what uh, test scores they need to enter a certain class. And so as freshmen enter Sarah, we really try to find the best fit for them. As they move through, we continue with that mentality. Just because a student starts in Algebra 1, they still have opportunities to get into honors classes. If a student starts in something like an honors geometry as a freshman, but they start struggling a little bit, they can be dropped down to what we call a regular class. It's still college prep class, but it's a little easier, not quite as intense, uh, not quite as demanding as an honors class. And we're gonna get the kids through. We're gonna get your sons through, uh, and that's really what's most important. All of our classes are college prep classes, uh, and uh, we do have probably about 40% of our students in the honors classes uh, out, of, out of all of our students. And uh, it varies from year to year, of course, uh, but uh, you know, just the rigors that we have set in the math uh, department early on establish uh, what the students are gonna take later. And we also have a lot of electives that students can take as they move through and, and they start finding their niche, start finding their, uh, their the, idea their course of the best course of study what they are looking at doing uh, when they get to college and so by junior year uh, we'll have students that take things like a virtual enterprise class or a more traditional business class uh, we have students that will take AP statistics we have students that will take AP computer science and we have we offer a class called uh, business algebra for students that might traditional math classes, uh, your pre-calculus might be a little uh, too abstract, might be a little challenging, and so more of a hands-on, uh, real-world application type class is what they need. And so again, we don't just look at what's bet what the best fit for the students as they come into Sarah, but throughout their four years at Sarah. And so it's a constant, uh, ever-changing, uh, not necessarily day-to-day -day, uh, process, but certainly semester by semester and certain definitely year by year process where we can reevaluate we will we will reevaluate the students from year to year and determine you know where they really fit sometimes in order to advance uh, we offer students the chance to take classes over the summer and it's not a requirement but students want to maximize their time during the summer to move uh, move ahead and so we offer some classes here at Sarah. We also uh, are open to students taking classes at a local junior college, uh, as long as they meet our requirements. And based on how well they do in that class, they can advance into the, another class uh, and basically skip a year of math. And there are certain classes we discourage students taking, but then there are also classes that we definitely are encouraged just based on the rigors that we have at Sarah, based on uh, you know, the, the needs uh, that need to be met over the summer. One perfect example of uh, advancement during the summer is if we have a student who's in Algebra 1 and shows that they're doing really well in Algebra 1, then their teacher can uh, sign off on them taking a summer school class, uh, like a regular geometry. And so by their sophomore year, they can advance to Algebra 2 which means by their senior year, they can be in a calculus class. And at Sarah, we offer both a regular calculus class, which is a college level class, just without the college uh, credit. And then we also offer AP classes, uh, such as AP uh, AB and AP BC, which are just two different levels that the advanced placement uh, test is offered. And, uh, and so the AB naturally is a little less advanced, BC is a little more advanced. 
but that typically is a junior or senior class. Well, one specific example that I can think of with that I use in my geometry class is I still believe in deductive proofs, the old-fashioned two-column proofs, and early on it seems very rigid and very formal, but as we move through the semester, as we move through the year, what I really want students to learn is that they're doing the same thought process, they're using the same thought process in science when they do labs, in history when, when they're writing term papers, and even as far as when they go get their masters in college, that they have to write a thesis, that they have to write a field study, that they have to present evidence. And so the critical thinking skills that they might not be able to put their finger on, the intangibles that they learn hopefully in a, in a geometry, honors geometry class here at SARA, can transition all the way through when they're getting their master's or doctorate, like I said. Uh, and hopefully they will learn how it works in other classes. And, uh, and so they, what they see in geometry, while it may not look exactly like a lab they're doing in science, it's the critical thinking skills that they're using uh, that, that transitions. Uh, when they get to pre-calculus, a good example is uh, Mr. Kamak loves doing a, a cooling, what we call a cooling project. And so as morbid as it might sound, how long does it take for a body to cool, uh, you know, for in a CSI type situation? And, uh, and so the, um, just the logarithmic functions of that uh, and the, uh, um, sorry, I'm blanking on, no, on okay. how, what Joe, um, that's it. Uh, and so with this cooling project, the exponential growth and decay factors uh, that are involved and, uh, and so just a real world example that, that we'll use. Uh, sometimes we like showing a, an example of a, a basketball shot or, or throwing a pitch uh, off of a mound and the parabolic function of that. And so students can really put their, put their hand, put their finger on how math is, is really involved. And, and it really is also deals with physics. And so sometimes we'll find that students that are in a physics class will, will talk about what they did in math and vice versa. When we had a look at our graduates at Sarah, after their four years here, we would really like to see a student who's a critical thinker. And certain classes really teach the intangibles. How do they think? How do they explain themselves? How do they uh, prove, provide proof? How do they provide an explanation that uh, really shows the depth of their knowledge? And so our questioning techniques, our testing techniques, uh, just our everyday class activities that we do, how we propose homework, it all is based around that. And so our curriculum is established not just for our individual classes, but how it fits in the greater scheme of things. And so we talk about classes both horizontally, which means that a geometry class, an honors geometry class, classes that work together, but also vertically. And so how Algebra 1, then Geometry, then Algebra 2, and finally Pre-Calculus, uh, just as an example of a sequence for a student, how that follows and how that can progress. And so we as teachers in the department really communicate to get that, um, to get the right mentality, to as freshmen come in, meet their level and try to challenge them, but then how different is it for a senior? What kind of questioning techniques, what uh, strategies are we gonna use? What type of real world applications do they need as they progress through junior and senior year and transition into college, college life?